I think it's been established there are people at Funimation that don't like me much and wanted me gone. Well, when you say that there are people at Funimation who don't like you much and wanted you gone, who are you referring to specifically? Chris Sabat. Is he Ooh. a Funimation oh, I would, employee? I, I would say he has a great deal of weight at Funimation. A great deal of weight. Do you recall at this rumor panel in Takesha Khan uh, addressing the issue of you being homophobic? Yes, sir. It's outrageous. And that was, uh, uh, and is that a rumor that has kind of dogged you even after that rumor panel? Yes, sir. And is that rumor uh, that you're homophobic, does that hurt your uh, professional reputation? If you slide over, it reads, Vic also reveals that he encouraged Britt and her friends to attack Kosfu and 4chan about these stories and that he set up a PayPal account which demanded video proof of Vic being drunk in exchange for $100. Does that ring a bell? Yes, sir. I didn't occur, I'm going to clarify though. You see, this is somebody's words, not mine. I didn't encourage someone to attack anybody. Okay. I will tell you what happened, if, if, if I may, Sean. Sure. There are all these rumors. I saw Vic falling down drunk, uh, um, um, stumbling around a convention. Well, there are dozens of cameras rolling at all times. I've never been stumbling drunk in my life, ever on the planet Earth. Could you imagine if the lawyer said, oh, so you weren't drunk on planet Earth, so you were drunk on other planets while you were filming Star Trek? And these rumors made up by fans just looking to get attention were more and more frustrating. And so I told one of my friends, why don't we set up a PayPal and Anyone who can provide video evidence of me stumbling around drunk at a convention, I'll give them a hundred bucks. Okay. Suffice to say, nobody ever claimed it because it never happened. All right, and during this rumor panel, did you encourage uh, people to go on sites and tell everybody that uh, they were wrong about you? I encouraged people that were my friends and supporters to be supportive. And have you had, between the Koshikon panel and uh, the January 19th uh, discussion you had with the Risen Bull Rangers, have you ever done that in between the, in the last nine years? Not that I recall. Actually, I kind of got used to it after a while. <laughs> you know, the first time it happened, I tried to, I tried to address it, and then I just kind of came to terms with the fact that there are people out there who are going to say what they want to say from the anonymity and and you know and safety of their laptops at home, and I can't do anything about it. So I just stopped addressing it. And what are the what would you say are the uh, rumors that have kind of persisted? Uh, well, this is one of the biggest ones that I'm homophobic. Although there's not one ounce of evidence. No, I, I would challenge anyone to provide any uh, public comment or attitude or anything that ever proves that I've been rude or cruel or hateful or mean or made ever, ever made a homophobic remark. I have several friends that are gay. There are many uh, friends of mine that worked on my Star Trek production who are gay. I attended uh, a, a, a transsexual friend's wedding. Do you recognize uh, Exhibit 14 as the tweet you sent out on January 20th, 2019? Yes, sir. This was the first, re the first response that I made four days after the, uh, I mean, based on the date, four days after the, the social media thing began. And, and this is the tweet that you put out after the day after you had the uh, discussion on the Risen Bull Rangers website about encouraging people to go out and talk about you in positive light. I, I don't remember the dates. Again, this was, <laughs> I was in quite a distressed place at this point, and I don't remember when. I wasn't going to respond. As I said just a minute ago, I had kind of gotten to the point where, you know what, don't, don't encourage it, don't respond. And so for the first several days, I didn't respond. And, and then this was the first public response. Now, you, you kind of apologize in that letter to people you've made 
feel uncomfortable? I mean, was there anybody in particular you were thinking, or was it just more of a generic? No, it was generic. It, it was the idea of somebody that I might have hugged for a photo that didn't say anything at the time, but of course they went home and posted about how they didn't approve, appreciate it or something, and I apologize to those people for not being sensitive to that. Now, were there allegations floating around after January 16, 2019, that you were a pedophile? Well, people have been throwing that word around for, you know, <laughs> For, for what? Well, just for a while. About you? Yes. For how long? I don't know. I mean, when's the first time you can recall? I don't recall. Mm. Like I said, um, there are people out there that see me hugging someone for a photo in front of 300 other people and 25 video cameras it's purely for the photo and they and they decide somehow that I'm a pedophile there is no evidence of that there's no proof of it there are no charges there are no convictions it's just salacious and uh, have any of the defendants to your knowledge ever accused you of being a pedophile not to my knowledge that is the apology that you wrote, or the not the apology, but the letter you wrote to Monica Riel on February 8th, 2019? Yes, sir. And you, uh, did you have any, anybody help you draft this? I bounced it off a couple friends of mine before mm -hmm. I sent it. And who'd you bounce it off of? Uh, my friend Jeff Johnson. Anybody else? Not that I can think of. At the time you wrote this, you had, it's your testimony that you had no idea uh, that Mrs. Rial uh, had accused you of uh, inviting her to your room, or to your room, and uh, forcing yourself on her. I never forced myself on her. Did you do anything? Did you kiss, make out with, or have any type of sexual interaction with Mrs. Rial at any point in time? If, if, if I understand correctly, this this is from 11 years ago, and I I don't I don't have any specific recollection. But what I can tell you is that I have had hundreds of interactions with Monica over the years since, and no indication whatsoever that I ever did anything that upset or offended her. Has she ever been in your hotel room? Uh in the last eight years? Sir, we've done dozens of conventions together. We have been friends, and I, I don't know any specific times, but I wouldn't be surprised if, if that were the case. Right. I'm going to object as non-responsive. I, I wouldn't be surprised if she were, because we've done many, many, many events together. As you sit here today, since in the last eight years, can you identify any time that you recall Mrs. Rial being alone with you in your hotel room? Is she married now, Mrs. Real? <laughs> I'm just saying I believe it's Miss Real. Um, <laughs> no, I don't recall any specific events, specific times. And, and you don't actually have a specific recollection of her ever being in your room? Not specifically, no. Okay. So uh, at the point in time when you wrote uh, this email in February 2019, you were really struggling to figure out uh, why she was upset with you. Yes, sir. And she hadn't gone public with that in any way. Oh, she had alluded to it publicly, but she had not given any specifics, which is why I said, I, I really want to know what, what it was that, you know. I, embarrass, I am embarrassed to say that I honestly don't know. I hope you will share it with me so that I may sincerely apologize. Apparently she wasn't interested in any apology because the beginning of this, she writes another member, at, another actress at Funimation and says, this is what he always does. It's disgusting. I guess she wasn't interested in any kind of sincere interaction. Object is non-responsive, made to strike. There's no question on the table. These are questions that your attorneys asked 
okay. uh, of Mrs. Rial at some point in time when she grabbed or kissed Mrs. Rial in a hotel room in the mid-2000s. As we sit here right now before reading your response, do you have any recollection of any type of interaction in your hotel room with Ms. Rial where you kissed her? No, sir. Okay. All right. So if you look at the first bullet point, it says plaintiff grabbed and kissed defendant without defendant's consent on Sunday, November 4th, 2017. While 2007. Oh, sorry. 2007. While plaintiff and defendant were both attending Azumacon, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Any recollection of that? No, sir. That was 12 years ago. Okay. Plaintiff played the video as promised while defendant stood to watch the video. The plaintiff soon grabbed defendant by the upper arms and began aggressively kissing defendant. Defendant attempted to resist, but plaintiff physically restrained defendant, pushed defendant back towards the, backward toward the bed. Plaintiff climbed on top of defendant and held her down as he continued to aggressively kiss defendant. Did you guys notice how he said the defendant attempted to resist? That's not what Monica Real said in her written statement. She said that she froze. And in her deposition, she said that she let it happen because she was afraid of any physical retaliation. Very interesting. Did that happen? No, sir. Are you sure that didn't happen? Yes, sir. Second bullet point on page six, plaintiff continued in this fashion for several minutes, despite defense. Several minutes. What Jack was Ms. Real doing at this time? Get the question out. Sorry, I apologize. Sure. I apologize. This is the first I read this. I'm sorry. Uh, I apologize. So I'm going to start over with the bullet point. Plaintiff continued in this fashion for several minutes, but despite defendant's fear and shock, until Ms. Dolan knocked, Mr. Dolan knocked on um, plaintiff's hotel door. Plaintiff left defendant on the bed and hurriedly answered the door. Mr. Dolan inquired whether defendant was okay, clearly noticing the stress. Defendant, however, was too shocked and afraid to admit what had occurred. And you dispute that, right? I don't recall that at all. Okay. Uh, la the third bullet point, following dinner, plaintiff forced defendant to speak with plaintiff's longtime fiance on the telephone, and plaintiff spoke with his front fiance as if nothing happened. Recall that? No, sir. And your fiance at the time would have been Mrs. Speck. Michelle Speck. Now, prior to today, have you seen that description from uh, Ms. Riel in, in any... I'm sorry, say that again. Sir. Prior to today, have you seen or heard that description from Ms. Riel online or anywhere? I, I know of the story that she posted online back when she originally posted it, um, but I, I, there are more details here than there were in her original story. Like, I don't believe on the online story, she didn't say anything about when or where. She didn't say anything about Stan Dallin. She didn't say anything about putting her on the phone. By the way, I, I well, I, I just don't even understand a lot of it, so. Have you uh, ever grabbed Mrs. Rial's hair, Ms. Rial's hair and pulled it back and whispered into her ears before? Whispered what? I don't know. Neither do I. Uh, I'm not asking for what you whispered. I'm asking. Well, you if asked if I did. I don't recall whispering anything. Do you recall grabbing her by the back of her hair and pulling her hair? I well, I I I recall doing that not in a violent or hurtful way, but in a playful way. Uh, Miss Rial used to be a hairdresser. She's always kind of changing her hairstyles over the years and coloring cool colors and. And I, and I always used to comment on how much I loved her hair or her new hairstyle. It's really disingenuous to use the term pulling hair, too, because it sounds, it just has a connotation of being somehow violent, and it, it was never that. But you did put your hands on her and pull her hair. Yes, sir. And you've done no, that more than once. No, I, I did not pull her hair. And again, we were friends. It was all in casual interaction. And I was never, if she had ever told me, don't, please don't do that again, I wouldn't have ever done it again. And is that something you've done with other women in the past who pull their hair just playfully as part of just who you are? Objection form. I would, I would definitely say it has probably happened before in, in playful interaction with people, but not very often. You look at the third paragraph, um, talks about uh, your colleagues and uh, 
that there was animosity that you didn't know existed. Who are you referencing there? Who are your colleagues? I am I am referencing any of the voice actors who not only posted, but those who uh, liked or supported the people that did. People that for the last 15 years of my work at Funimation have seen me in the hallways and even worked with me in productions and been nothing but friendly and kind and jovial, and I never had any idea that there was any animosity. Anybody you can specifically identify? Well, I'm sure you can find them by who who posted, who uh, liked the tweets. But nobody, as we sit here today, off the top of your head. Well, I'm certain I was referring to Monica, probably Jamie, and I know that Chris Sabat. Sean Schimmel, um, and a few other voice actors liked and commented on on some of this, and I was quite dumbfounded when I when I found out. I'm like, oh my goodness! Like I worked, I cast this guy in my show, and he was all friendly and you know and jovial and best buddies, and now he's online joining in on this. It was surprising. Just, was least. it just a total shock to you that these people were coming out? Uh, that have known you for all these years and yes, sir And just don't know why they would do that. Yes, sir uh, Did you seek the help of a counselor at any time on her objection privileged? Well, why is it privileged? I'm not asking him what the counselor talked that's about. That's true. That's true. Fair enough. Fair enough. You can answer yes or no. Did that's you sure. sought the help of a counselor um, prior to February 13th but with regard to this whole issue? I don't remember the date specifically, but I was in a great deal of distress and needed to talk to somebody, and I, I started spending, I started seeing a counselor. Um, so February 13th, uh, kind of the last paragraph you talk about, you don't want anyone to be hateful to anybody else so why did you why did you make that statement were you aware of something that was going on well because I, I knew that there was a lot of uh, um, what's the word vitriol friction you know what I mean there was a lot of of uh, growing uh, friction it was just building and I, I didn't I didn't want any of that I didn't ask I didn't ask for any of this I didn't start any of it I was living my life, and suddenly, out of nowhere, this stuff starts. I merely responded to it. And have you posted that type of uh, statement anywhere else since then? I have said that statement several times in events that I've attended since this, publicly. And there, I'm, I'm quite certain there are many videos online of me encouraging people to be kind and positive and, and you know, be known for, for being a purveyor of good as opposed to negativity. What is it that Jamie Mar uh, Markey has done to, uh, to defame you? Wow. Uh, well, uh, apart from mischaracterizing a very casual, brief interaction in public and the lobby at Funimation, she publicly posted that and then went on to say that she wanted my head on a stake and wanted my balls in a sling and has has posted many, many extremely uh, vitriolic comments. And, and how is that defamatory? Because she's a voice actress in my industry and people will tend to give her more credence because they think, oh, well, she knows him. She, you know, she must, her, her, her words must carry more weight than some average, some fan, you know, some miscellaneous fan out there. So uh, what was it exactly that uh, she mischaracterized? Or took out of context? Uh, she mischaracterized, um, 
my memory of, of the event what, with Jamie was that I had come in to record one day at Funimation, and I was in the lobby, and she was there, and she had just changed her hair somehow. She, had, she was wearing it differently, or she had cut it somehow. Probably as far away as I am from uh, um, Casey, and she said, hey, hon. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I love your hair. And she's like, I know, I, I just got it. And I walked around the, the, uh, the counter, and I was kind of standing there, kind of flipping it, and like, oh my gosh, it's really beautiful, I love it. And I, and I put my hand up in the bottom of it, and I'm like, oh, this is great. It was not painful, it was not hurtful, it was not sexual, and it happened at least four or five years ago, maybe longer. And if I may say, I saw Jamie in the lobby at Funimation in January of this year, literally a week to 10 days before this social media thing started. And she's like, hey, hon, and went over and hugged her and said hello. Uh, she and I have had, as far as I've known, a very casual, friendly relationship for many, many years. And I was astounded. And the account online is that you pulled her hair, and that I pulled her hair, and that I that I whispered something sexual in her ear, which absolutely is not true. Mm -hmm. I do not have not ever had any sexual interest in Jamie. When's the first time you can recall uh, <laughs> allegations of uh, sexual harassment being raised against you in, in your career as a voice actor? Can I ask you to define sexual harassment? Uh, the unwanted touching. Uh, so that so any any unwanted any, any, contact any, is harassment. Sexual harassment, yeah. Sexual harassment. Sure. I I don't agree with your definition personally. Okay. But then give me your definition of sexual harassment. Uh, forcing somebody to engage in sexual related behavior against their will. Okay, so you have to use some type of physical force to harass them under your definition, right? Or verbal. Okay. And, and when's the first time that you were ever, has there been any allegations made against you for verbal or physical sexual harassment? Well, for the longest time, my only recollection of the rumors and stories online were that I would hug fans that, you know, that didn't want to be hugged. Um, or, you know, or I would get, I would be too close to, to a fan that didn't appreciate it. And of course, they didn't say anything at the time, but they, w they mentioned it later. Um, th those were the first instances I ever heard of. And when was that? Like roughly. Um, I, I don't remember. Would you agree with me that this issue of you kissing young girls and that being kind of creepy has been around for a while? No, sir. Something that just started? No, I wouldn't agree that it was kind of creepy, oh. that part of your sentence. Uh, uh, all right, how about we do it this way? Would you agree with me that people online have commented that it's creepy that you kiss young girls. Sure. And that's been around for a while. Yes, sir. And that's certainly impacted your uh, uh, personal reputation, hasn't it? Not much. I mean, I, I was doing pretty well in the industry, as you pointed out yourself at the beginning of the deposition. Um, I've right. done hundreds of characters. I've, I've, uh, I'm just saying, I've, I've been a voice actor at Funimation and been hired repeatedly for 15 years and and it all started on April 16th 2019 when that tweet went out April I'm sorry January 2016 no no like I said it, it my belief is that 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 date was chosen to piggyback on the popularity of the Broly movie um, there has been a recurring theme here over the years anytime I am announced as part of a new big new show or playing a role, there are always a handful of people that want to jump on that publicity and, and get some attention for themselves.
Um, and, and by get attention from yourselves, you mean people post anonymously that you you harass people or do inappropriate things? Yes. And so they want to get attention for themselves through yes. their anonymous avatar, I guess? Yes. For the same reason they don't want to be listed right now. Because they want the attention, they want people to click on, oh, I liked your post, and oh, oh, look how many people liked my post. But they don't, you know, they certainly don't want the accountability. And whenever any supporters have been pressed for any evidence or substance, well, a friend told me that they heard from a friend who saw a friend who said that they heard at a convention four years ago, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. And so, the people that have come out and um, actively accused you of things you've sued. I'm sorry. The people that have come out with evidence and said, "This is my testimony, and this is what happened," you've sued them. What evidence would that be? Objection not responsible. <laughs> Isn't it true that the, you? Well, let me back it up. Uh, your complaint is that people don't offer evidence, right? They just say things anonymously, fair? Some people. All right, and uh, some people actually come out, use their name, and make statements about things that you've done that they think were inappropriate, right? Yes. And you've sued at least two of them, two women that uh, allege that you did inappropriate things to them, correct? Yes. All right, you haven't sued any of the magazines or online articles that wrote uh, articles using all these anonymous names. Have Not you? yet. You planning on doing that? Possibly. You would agree with me that if you don't see those magazines, your reputation is still going to be damaged because you'll never... Oh, I would say my reputation has been irreparably damaged. And because of those correct. articles, correct? No, sir, because of everything. All of it. It's a cumulative thing. Didn't you use, like, the term you used? Death by a thousand cuts, you know? What is it that you allege that Funimation did to harm you or to defame you? After, well, first of all, I, I don't believe they really had any legitimate reason to do what they did. After the conversation ended with Miss Denbo, I honestly believed that when they called me back, they were going to say, you're on some kind of probation for a year, you know what I mean? And if we have any other complaints, then, you know what I mean? That's really what I thought would happen. Okay, those are all the questions I have. Thank you. Thank you, John.